bill. That 1994 crime bill, um, it, it did contribute to mass incarceration in our country. I don't think black America really understand there's a profitability in America's criminalizing black people. This is what we seem to overlook is that they are financed off of the criminalization of us. The 1994 crime bill was signed by President Bill Clinton. You know, this was a pretty significant bill at the time. And President Clinton and Senator Biden at the time uh, were right that the bill was significant. The most significant federal effort to deal with violent crime in America that has ever been undertaken. It was. We think America is this high and great, great and mighty country that does well off business, but really what it does is bleeds off the backs of black people. Provided huge amounts of funding to hire cops. 100,000 cops were funded. It was about $14 million at the time for community policing. The we analyzed data on 13,147 U.S. police departments. And to this day, even with the removal of the Crime Bill Act, we're still dealing with the effect ramifications of the overhiring of these police and the way that they chose to maintain the bit, the funding for the continuation of these large police departments was off the backs of black people ticketing us in every which way possible. The village of Bratnell, known for its secluded lakefront mansions, a four-mile stretch on Cleveland's east side nestled between the Glenville and Collinwood neighborhoods. I-90 isn't just the divider, but a span of interstate some try to avoid. Everyone knows that Bratnell will pull you over. Drivers like Saria left to wonder why her. I pulled you over because you, you get an accident or something? And Christopher. It's the sunlight is what it is. Everybody picks up speed in the sunlight. This driver not using a blinker. I'm not out here looking for people like trying to get, you know what I mean? We just don't want drunk drivers in the room. And James. I pulled you over because they say that the registered owner is suspended. All four got tickets. No violation, no violation, yep. So when you got pulled over, you were surprised? Yes. Something needs to be said to the people because it's not fair. What we don't understand is how much of their community is financed off of the prosecution of the black community. I'm talking about their roles, their police officers, their courthouses, their judges, payrolls. All these things are financed off the back of prosecuting black people using their justice system. From January 2020 to this September, police either cited or warned more than 4,000 people. Race was listed in just over 2,200 cases. 63% were black, 34% were white. In the village of just over 1,400, where about three out of every four are white, flanked by predominantly black neighborhoods in Cleveland. I need you to understand you don't have to be driving. Any interaction that black people have with the police, they seize it as an opportunity to ticket us and drain wealth from our community. But you have to understand they are incentivized by that because their job is based off of them policing our community. And it's not only the police who are paid to over-police our community. Yeah, Diamond Robinson first met her neighbor who accused her of being too loud and today. And you know, Diamond and I were talking, we both have loud voices that carry, but she really didn't think that she was talking so loud that the police should be called. Diamond Robinson says she was just walking up and down Cushing Street, the street she lives on in East Point, talking on her phone on Thursday when she says one of her neighbors approached her. Do you think that you can get off your phone or talk lower? One of those things that she said. And I said, get out of my face. And I proceeded to walk past her. 
So she's she's saying whatever she's saying. Three minutes later, East Point police pulls up. The woman who called the police just moved to the neighborhood a couple of weeks ago, according to Diamond, and she is white. That's an important part of the story because Diamond thinks she's being targeted because she's black. I'm not 73 million, 73 million, three, 300 and 1,318 arrests made. Police in America made 12 times as many arrests for low-level offenses as for violent crimes from 2013 to 2021. I don't think we understand what that means when we say 73 million, 301,318 arrests made and 12% of those arrests was non-violent crimes. That means here in America, we are arresting 67,192,875 non-violent, low-level crimes on an annual basis. I'm not doing anything wrong by walking up and down the street talking on my phone. But as Diamond continues to record, the police officers end up writing her a ticket. A ticket for being a public nuisance because I'm talking too loud on my phone. That's why I got a ticket. And that ticket isn't cheap. $385. There is no way that I sh the police should be called on me when I am on my own property on in my own neighborhood on my own block. So you can imagine the discretion they have when it comes to writing tickets for driving as far as the issues that they can say was the reason for them pulling you over and ticketing you in order to drain wealth up out of your community. And without any limitations on their discretion and without any checks and balances on how they are evaluating who to pull over, black people will continuously be targeted by them as a means of draining wealth from our community in order to finance them. We have to understand that they have always been leeches on us. This is why we have not been able to prosper the way we have is because you got a leech sucking the life out of you. It's frustrating, definitely taking the time out to have to come to court. He really had no reason to pull me over. So, and that's why I'm here. Every other Tuesday, like clockwork, an officer blocks off the village hall parking lot. Street parking only for drivers with a date with the magistrate. They check in and line up. Once inside, they meet with a prosecutor. In each case we witnessed, violations were amended, which kept points off people's licenses. So it's still your wish to no contest? Okay, then. Suspend 75. It'll be 75 plus 75 plus 75 plus 75 plus 75 plus court costs. In the end, James fixed the issue with his license, but still had to pay $185. Times are tight. I could have sure used the money, but I guess uh, I should have been valid. Cleveland Councilman Kevin Conwell says the fight. And this is another reason why I'm adamantly opposed to the bracelet program that they are now currently rolling out. It's because it's another way for them to extract wealth up out of the black community without any trial, without any conviction. Still, we will suffer the consequences from this over policing. This is why this police reform that Jay-Z is doing is horrible and the complete opposite of what Kyla Kaepernick was doing, which was bringing attention to the brutality and the mistreatment of the police. What he is doing is trying to bring attention to black people and make it as seen as if we are the issue. So, making defendants pay ankle bracelet is a functional equivalent of cash bail. The United States criminal justice system currently holds almost 2.3 million people out of the 2.3 million people incarcerated. <clears throat> 612,100 are held in state jails. Out of those 612,000 inmates, 
462,000 have not been convicted of any crime. Shockingly, only 24% of those being held in state jails have actually been convicted of a crime. Statistically, over 74% of people held by jails have been convicted of any crime and are being held by in pretrial detention. The most pernicious provision of the 1994 crime bill was its $12 billion that was authorized for states across the country that would enact what's called truth in sentencing laws. That funding literally paid states to increase the number of prison beds that they allocated for individuals convicted of violent crime in this country to serve 85% of their sentences behind bars. The reason that provision is so important and the reason we're still talking about it today is the federal government essentially subsidized states across the country to build more prisons. It is the prison guards when they place the prisons in the white community you will see them lobbying for these prisons. There is great wealth in the criminalization of the black community. And we're, we're allowing the people who benefit from the ticketing of you, of our community, to continue to do this unchecked. This is my issue with the current uh, uh, a criminalization reform program that uh, celebrities like Jay-Z are working on because none of them target the over-policing in our community. Um, today is May 15, 2010. Uh, the time is now about 7.47 in the evening. I just need to get my story out. And you are Mr. Khalif Browder, is that correct? Yes. I was going home from a party now I want to operate 1719 with emergency. Two male black guys. They took my brother book back. There was a guy saying that I robbed them. They said we're going to take you to the precinct. Did you rob somebody in the beginning part of May, Mr. No. Browder? No. The time is now 10 to 8. This interview is concluded. They said most likely we're gonna let you go home. Rikers. Violent New York jails Rikers in the Island. country. All right, all right. Look what he's doing. Stop resisting. But then. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? I don't know. I never went home. Khalif is my son. The popular alternative to Cash Bell is ankle bracelet monitoring. Courts are beginning to offer ankle bracelets as an option for certain crimes such as low-level nonviolent offenses. The problem is that many states defer the cost of maintaining ankle braces onto defendants themselves. At first, blu first blush, a defendant decision to opt for ankle bracelet monitoring versus remaining in jail before trial makes total sense. For most Americans, limited pretrial freedom, even under electronic supervision, is preferable to no freedom at all. Very few Americans, however, understand the true cost of maintaining an ankle bracelet. I know what he went through. I went through a lot with him. I felt like I was done wrong. I felt like something needed to be done about this. If I just say that I did it, nothing's going to be done about it. I didn't do it. No justice is served. Nobody hears nothing at all. I had to fight. An ankle bracelet costs about $50 for setup and $14 for daily maintenance. Over the course of one month, a defendant will easily pay $470 to have an ankle bracelet. These costs can be even higher depending on their location. For example, it costs up to $35 a day to maintain an ankle bracelet in San Francisco. 
and with the average time spanning up to two years in some jurisdictions before a criminal case goes to trial, the cost quickly adds up. According to a 2011 report by the criminal courts of the city of New York, it took over 400 days on average in the city over four barrels to bring a case to a jury trial and verdict. With cases in Brooklyn taking nearly 600 days for many defendants who cannot even afford to post a $1,000 cash bail, the cost to have an ankle bracelet is too much. Even worse, if the defendant fails to keep up with costs, they will end up detained in jail with no opportunity to pay bail either. So you have to understand that Another aspect of this bracelet situation is that it will allow them to drain money out of you without even having to convict you. $475 a month for the next five years because that's 60 months. Total to somewhere around 6, 12, uh, 18, uh, yeah, uh, 6, 12, 18, 24, uh, somewhere around $30,000 in five years just to be, re just to be free. So what that does is that ties your freedom to your job. Ties your freedom to your job and it creates problems in your household when you're dealing with financial issues on top of that this is these traps and you're just giving them a continued income and you haven't been convicted of a crime black people have to understand that they just transfer the system that they use in order to keep us enslaved. They're not about to relinquish you. You are their battery source. They are nothing but leeches. We have to wake up and understand our participation in their justice system is only the financing of their system. Walk away like it's okay. It's not okay. I lost my childhood. I lost my happiness. They destroyed my life, my family's life.